Hey guys, hope you're well and welcome to this video. It's something a little bit different for you today. We've got uh, a bit of a podcast vlog kind of style video all about the experience uh, of the Heresy Reveal Day. So first things first, a huge thank you to Games Workshop for allowing us to be involved with the Content Creator Day. Uh, we had a really good experience in, in not only working on an army for the day, but also being invited to have a, a first try of the, of the new game and also be there on the day of the reveal of the box and all the other little extras that came along with it um, just to really be involved in the whole sort of process has been super super humbling and uh, really really want to show you all of the experience and the things that went into obviously creating the army so uh, we've got a really nice sort of different sort of sections of this video we've got a bit with Ed and myself going over sort of um, completing projects to a tight deadline which is the army which we produced the Blood Angels 30k army um, also got a little bit of information about obviously what's it like playing the new game um, I'm not going to give any spoilers but it's absolutely awesome uh, and then lots of other bits and bobs of just on the day at the event the museum uh, going around Warhammer World all different things that we had the pleasure of being invited and doing while we were there so a really really cool video for you guys to watch perhaps while you're painting or just if you're traveling or if you want to just check something a little bit different with us here on the channel uh, so I hope you're going to like this ever so much uh, strap yourselves in it's a real good one and uh, our final thing I will say is if you've never been to Warhammer World then this video hopefully is going to tip you over the edge to go in because it was phenomenal going and seeing all the different things that are there so let's get cracking let's jump in and I'll see you very very soon so Ed uh, let's recap um, the awesome heresy event and oh, uh, yeah. uh, what, a, what, a, what a great thing it was to be involved with um, so I think best place to start I think we start from the beginning I think it's probably the better thing to to, to do um, so, so jumping in from the beginning, like when we were, when we were approached by by um, by GW, um, we we obviously were asked like, oh, what would you like to do? And and, and anyone in, anyone who knows me well enough knows that if it's red and comes from Baal, that's pretty much what my jam is. Um, so I have heard that you were you were pretty keen on doing some blood yeah, angels. Yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So I kind of like uh, crossed every digit and 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 basically, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I basically begged and pleaded. Yeah. To, 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 <laughs> I'm not gonna lie um to 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 get the sons of baal and um and uh fortunately um yeah uh, we, we we obviously got that got that gig which is amazing um but the real good thing about it was just the idea i think behind the whole thing getting so many people from the community uh, content creators yeah. youtubers um obviously people who paint um involved with with the launch of this of this you know uh, or the reveal of the, of the of the of the new box and um and everything that's that's, that's in it um which which is just really phenomenal i think as, as an idea it's really uh, telling of the times and how how the industry is going that you know we're seeing uh, things like this now happen which obviously content creators involved with companies and things i think it's really really good for the industry and and to be asked to be part of something like this it's if you'd have asked me this when i started siege all those years ago like you'd be you know working with gw or doing stuff yeah. with them and being asked to be involved with stuff like i you know i wouldn't i wouldn't really I, I wouldn't really believe it to be honest um and i think that's just something that is, is really good um so yeah so on the on the project um the box uh we were sent it in advance and, and then i made a, a really i kept it kind of secret from you for a little bit i think didn't i, I think i was you like kept going, you kept going, there's a project i'm working on i really want to get you involved but like i need i need to see if i can do it on my own first yeah i i, I didn't know how obviously i hadn't seen the full contents of the box that you know and um i didn't know what was involved within it and then there was also the time frame aspect and i think we'll, we'll touch upon that in a bit anyway but um the, the 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 i didn't know whether i'd be able to do it around obviously work and stuff um so yeah it got to a point where when the box turned up and i saw the sheer amount of models in it and i was just like there's no way i'm gonna i love blood angels but there's no way i'm gonna be able to tackle this this on my own um so obviously we had a conversation and um and then that kind of started from there didn't it yeah you were like yeah. the next time i was down in the office you're like ed i've got a box to show you yeah. and <laughs> somewhat hilariously it was just the box the box was empty there are no models in it but i opened the cardboard box in i said oh my god i can see a spartan the yeah. first thing you can see from the way yeah. it was packaged was just the spartan on the on the image peeking out yeah yeah and and that and yeah, look, it's a phenomenal phenomenal part of the of the box as well um but yeah so so we had that conversation i think the, the best place to start is to sort of like um is to uh sort of go over sort of our, our approach to it i think i i think 
we split it in the best way possible i think like, oh, i was very happy with not doing 40 <laughs> infantry in a short period of time yeah yeah i mean that you know to batch in 40 infantry or batch in big numbers of infantry for anyone is testing um but I yeah just, I, I, i'd just like to say the amount of people who are like oh you and james split the box you got all the you got the bad end of it did you it's like no no i took i took the better end yeah it's <laughs> two freighters and a spartan yeah didn't have to go near 40 infantry so. yeah 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 i mean i i, I actually um i i I enjoy painting infantry, but then, yeah, like, um, I think that if we'd have done it any other way, I think it would have been, it wouldn't have worked for the time frame and also for what we wanted to achieve with it as well. I don't think. And um, also don't consistency th in painting. Yeah. So I know um, Kira and um, Ollie um, Broadsword Wargaming um, did their video about the sort of heresy wrap up and their approach to, to painting it. And they'd both said, you know, they paint very different styles. So yeah. They were working hard to bring them together. We paint in very similar styles. We mm -hmm. write recipes in the same way, but even then, just like making sure, rather than us doing like twenty infantry each, there would still be <laughs> slight differences. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So it does allow that like consistency across each model. Yeah, and the thing is, when you look at it unit by unit as well. So, like for example, it would have made no sense doing like five terminators each, or you know, a character each, or something like that. I think that yeah, I think that split was. was or we'd just be of... judging against each other too much. Exactly. Exa <laughs> exactly. That's it. Um, but yeah, so we, we had a really good split on it. Um, you took the two characters, the Spartan and the Terminators, um, uh, and then I had the the block of forty beakies, which was uh, which was a uh, uh, quite quite testing, uh, and also the Dreadnought, which admittedly um, I did fall in love with. So so yeah, it was uh, it was. What was your favourite thing that you done from 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 sort of like the, oh, what you had? Okay, so either the saw. Uh, well, I actually. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of the Axe Praetor model, just in terms of, I don't know, there's a few different design cues that I'm not a big fan of it about, um, but I really enjoyed painting it. Mm. It was actually a really nice model to paint. Um, I'm just personally not a massive fan of all of the um, rivets and studs in the armor, which is obviously a big aesthetic for that yeah. model. Um, but I really enjoyed painting the Sword Praetor and the Spartan. Um uh, so, I mean, for me, being in the heresy group, I was in in Edinburgh, everyone and their mums had a Spartan. Yep. Most people had two. <laughs> and I only, I was playing Mechanicum and I needed a little allied force of Iron Warriors. So I couldn't quite justify buying and painting this massive, awesome transport before. Yeah, but for yeah. me, it's like the embodiment of Imperial vehicles. You are putting a brick on the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and painting that was loads of fun. Yeah, even though it's just massive. I, 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 I wish I wish I could have painted it, but for me, I, I actually find tanks more arduous than infantry, which I, which I think some people probably think that's yeah. crazy. But I, we I, didn't I, have time. But I wanted to put free hand up the side of like just like an angel, um, or some like complex scroll work of something. I think that would have been good fun. Yeah, I think I think and talking about the time limit. So so between us, we had what was it? I think it's about four and a half four and a half weeks. I think it was to work from from the, the box arriving, um, getting. It all built i think i spent a week I, I spent a week building it so that it was all built yeah you, you came down didn't you i think you popped yeah, down so you, for a bit. you spent a week building it and then one of the weekends i helped out a little bit did some other projects as well um and then we sprayed then, the lot up didn't we we got it all done. yeah it was a full day of of priming yeah. and getting the blood red yeah color just yeah. right so 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 just orange the, yeah, just just <laughs> orange yeah so uh again if you if anyone who knows me and my my personal sort of take on blood angels um I'm a big fan of second edition and and i know there's probably people that are like oh they should be very grimy and battle damage and all this but i wanted i think for especially for what we do and obviously paint in that sort of style uh that box art kind of style i want to do something really clean with it i think and um and to not put the nerd hat on too much but um obviously blood angels wouldn't be seen dead with battle damage on them they're too much of an artisan to not want to be seen sort of in their best tux at the party if you know what i mean so go a kind of primer in the middle of the utility <laughs> yeah. belt if they're yeah. going into battle just spray that away yeah exactly uh, and and i think um i think uh there's lots of little nods that uh, obviously when we discussed about sort of putting uh things like for example the yellow barrels on the melters and things like that just little nods to that kind of like second ed kind of like era kind of artwork and stuff i mean yeah i mean to me like old artwork old artwork of space marines is beakies yeah 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 so like it makes sense when you were like we're gonna do it like this i was just like yeah cool because yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like when painting it we're going to end up with there's you know there's there's a couple of different ways of looking at it you either go like modern 40k yeah uh, blood angels you yeah. go classic 40k blood angels or there is the varied artwork that's in heresy which kind of like kind of toes line between the two but often is actually a sort of a, a richer more more ready red than either the for either of the 40k variants yeah exactly and we, we used a lot of that artwork to des like to look at where um where different parts of the model would be colored so like on the terminators like 
where black. we had the uh, yeah the black shoulder pads um, and on the knee pads and how it rings around the neck, whether it's gold or black or red in those areas. Yeah. So like we did draw on that, but it was still like we've got a chance to do a a like throwback to the second edition, the first beakies we saw. Yeah. Um, and do that. Yeah. I mean, I I spent a little bit of time before. I mean, um, I, I used to obviously enjoy Heresy, but I never played it properly. Like I said, I enjoy the models and everything. I never had I an, say, an army. You've, you've had a, a large collection of of older, older Heresy mod- era. Yeah. Um, space marines for a long time yeah and, and I, I, I but i didn't ever have like a full proper army of it but obviously lots of different individual models and things so so this was like my first proper chance of like doing an army for it i suppose um so yeah so i you know and obviously i've got i've hoarded over many years lots and lots of uh lots of of, of blood red paint so um it, it needs to be used obviously so um so a project like this is perfect um more importantly the uh, the red we used is what would have been used in the epic armageddon um that is correct models which is obviously where the the all the Horus Heresy stuff came from. Yeah. So actually, we're doing what was correct. Correct. Yes. And in the grand scheme of things, you can paint it whatever color you like. So it yeah. doesn't really matter. <laughs> red, red's red. Red's red. So yeah. Um. So when it comes to the painting, um, we put down a base layer of Mephiston red first, purely because it's blood red is notorious for being quite thin as a red. Um, and especially the older sort of hex pots, they they they're really good. Um, for like airbrush usage and stuff like that. Um, but they do have tend to be a bit thinner, so they need like a foundation of a base color to start off with. Um. Um, and then it was a heavy, heavy uh, blood red session through the airbrush, and my extraction booth looks like a, a massacre has happened within it. Um, and the uh, bathroom sink as well. And the bathroom He's sink, yes. The bits out of it. Yeah, yeah. The the paint had one of the blood red pots had uh, a little bit of sediment. Let's put it that way because it was so old. So uh, we had to, I had to get a tea strainer. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Um, and then obviously after that, once it was fully sort of uh, base coated with blood red, then we just done the split. I think you obviously popped you had been went back up to Nottingham, um, obviously with your half. I mean, I don't know how you approached it and on some of the pieces you done, Ed, but... They were, they were red, then I did the blacks, then I did <laughs> yeah. the silvers, then I did the golds. Yeah. Then that was it for the Terminator. Oh, no, the Terminator said the Terouge for the leather strap, so yeah, I then yeah. did the base colour for those. Um, then when I did the Spartan again, like I made sure every single thing on the Spartan was the correct colour for its base coats. Then yeah. I did shades, then I did highlights, Yeah. Um, yeah. starting from largest colour to minority colour. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really like the... the, 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 the in, in my, my, my opinion it's the best way to be as methodical as possible because um especially when you're hitting tight deadlines like for example like with with us we had essentially um i think three and a half once it was built there was a week building but then three and a half weeks essentially to just get through it which was uh it's quite a it's quite half sh- weeks to get through it while also working while also working yeah yeah, yeah. um i mean i i think you took you had a week's a week yes, off, didn't you yeah. know and i had a week as well a week and a bit you know um arguably i time synced most of my time into stupidly into the dreadnoughts i absolutely fell in love with it um i think i spent a couple of day, a day there, were, there were quite a few days we just sending me updates i was just like it's like not a huge amount's changed here james no i like, know i literally i was enjoying painting it so much um like plastic contemptor is like an incredible first of all it's an incredible yeah. incredible model um you know i think, um, I think in total I had about 10 working days i think yeah over yeah. everything uh, spent in the end yeah it's it's it was a it was a real push uh you know and um and obviously when you're trying to paint it in that kind of box art style it, it you can't really rush it as well which is the thing that um which is a thing you know that we're, we're conscious of as well so you, you we were up against it a little bit but but i think yeah in the split it just made it really really workable um you know um, i actually found the i actually found doing the infantry because the infantry took me a week and a half um solidly on them um so i had literally a three and a half weeks so it was like a week on the dreadnought week and a half on the on the infantry and i think i done sanguineous in just under the, the extra week and I had a bit more time just to finish on the infantry and do a bit more. I never got to do the second highlight stage on the infantry, which I was really bum- bummed out about. Um, and I think in hindsight, um, I should have just got the dreadnought to a certain stage and then jumped straight on the infantry. So I think that's, yeah. a, that's a mistake that I made on that. But, but, um, but yeah, I can always add the second highlight to the, to the menu after anyway. So it's yeah. not the end of the, it's not the end of the world. Claw. But principally like sub assemblies wise, you can do that box with very little sub assemblies. Um, yeah. we probably could have done less. Like you, you, thinking about the spartan like probably could have stuck on if you weren't if you weren't bothered about weapon swaps you could have stuck on a huge amount of stuff that we had off yeah we kept it quite clean though because the, the the kit um and if you've seen the sprues the kit the, the spartan kit i mean a lot of the vehicles and well, there's lots of extras like this so you've obviously got all the different arrays the hunter killer missiles or it's a havoc launcher sorry um you've got all the little extras um 
we put the pintail mount on for the multi melter and that's interchangeable with the other weapons that we magnetized but all the other like tank accessories and things like that we didn't put that on there just to keep it quite clean and minimal uh, again just purely to, for, as a time saver for, for, for yeah, the we just took loads of blood angel stuff on instead yeah you know? even better yeah <laughs> that really keeps it minimal <laughs> yeah yeah it could have been worse touching upon that as well that's actually something to touch upon um so in the brief that we, we were given obviously for the project um and obviously that fanboy mode went on maximum when, when we got when we got blood angels uh i, I was really like, i was I raiding, every head raiding and every my shoulder spares, yeah, raiding my spares for mark six a mark six or swords or bits and bobs or little decorative pieces or whatever blah blah um and i think something to be bear really in mind is that obviously being invited to do an event like this is to obviously it's, it's super super great to be invited but at the same time we're there to to show off what you can do with it but we're also being respectful to the fact that it's a product and also uh, people seeing it for for oh this is what i can get um yeah. so i did email in and say look um obviously i'm super excited to be doing this and what also can be, i change <laughs> what can i and what can we or can i do to the models and and we were essentially given the brief that like the odd head swap here um the odd weapon yeah. swap here you know um uh, after that email a lot of the ideas and bits that i had in mind did go out the window you kept going, <laughs> oh can i change this instead i'm like i'm like you can it is uh, it's definitely blood angels you can do it yeah but at the end of the day, if we're trying to show off a product or yeah. help show off a product, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I stood next to the cabinets talking to people at events, and I've seen it on Reddit and Facebook of groups afterwards since then, loads of people going, oh, like, well, does all this Blood Angel stuff come in the box? Yeah, is that an upcoming yeah. accessory? Yeah. Reality is everything Blood Angels that you saw in that box came from pre-existing 30k and 40k kits that we'd stock on afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that was, I think, you know, there were some of the legions that did more swaps than us. There were some that did less. But I did find it interesting that even with relatively few swaps, there were still... You know, the the one thing I really love about is it the representing box, the product. Yeah, you're, 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 we obviously wanted to be as honourable to the product as possible because it is, you know, a release for people to see it. You know, um, but I think one of the real good things and, and the, the event and all the creators and everything they did with the armies was uh, was was really telling of this is that they with not with very little work you can add on the flavor of your legion quite easily to the to, oh, the, yeah. to the models um which is a real testament to the kit and the design obviously the cataphracty are stock so they've been around before but yeah. all the all the rest of it um it, you can add that nuance of legion I know, yeah i mean i know a lot of people don't like the beaky armor i think the, th the thing that a lot of people struggle with is is the helmet yeah but like looking at looking maybe not ours because we didn't do we did a lot of zephon head swaps where yeah. you got the beaky with the <laughs> filigree yeah but looking at how some of the other content creators did it doing like you could buy one upgrade sprue mm -hmm. from 412 or from a 40k variant if it's got some of the older style mark four heads or something um or mark five six heads in there that you yeah. want um that aren't just that that beaky you could just put them on a couple of the sergeants yeah. um you could swap put the praetor heads it's really simple, like uh, Colt of Paint, White Scars, that Praetor um, with a sword, it's been swapped to a Sabre, and it just looked radically different. Yeah, yeah. Sabre swap, and I think it had a head swap. And, so, and there was a couple of top, looks, top it's knots. It's so different, yeah. yeah. So, like, with, with very little effort, you can change it. I mean, I, when I get a box, I have decided I'm going to go Ultramarines, and I, I quite like the look of Ultramarines in Mark VI with the Beaky. Yeah. So I'm probably going to keep most of them the same, but I might go get the Ultramarines upgrade pack, or, you know, we've seen now the Imperial Fists, upgrade prac previewed yeah yeah that's i might great. see obviously if an ultramarines one's coming i might get some of those heads and stick them on um i've got some of the sort of you know some 40k bear heads that i think you know scale wise still work i might do some yeah. swaps on just little things but like they're designed that transfers and the little bit of swapping can just radically change the look of a unit I, I genuinely preferred them like when i got them out and, and obviously you know we, we obviously got them a little bit in advance you know yeah um i mean from a painter's perspective there's a lot of space to put te to paint texture oh yeah on yeah 100%. and paint detail that super smooth armor like you know the difference between mark two and mark three is that you've got all that ribbing and banding up the legs and body and everything that made like you know if you're if you're putting a wash on it's really easy with those to get a, a good looking bit of contrast between your lights and your darks whereas on the smoother straight legs that are bigger it might be harder to have that, that one shot quick yeah paint scheme i think for like from a painter's perspective if you look at the 
18 different examples they did for the legions there's huge amounts of variation from the specialist games team where they've worked in uh, like recess shade colors um nice highlights weathering subtle weathering then you look at what the community does with really over top weatherings like i think the good like you're touching upon like the good thing about them is that they they are quite uh, as a canvas they're blank which is good um and you you can do so much with them if you do prefer like obviously we went for a very clean finish on, on the models for, for for what we were presenting for it for, for the angels force um but if you are really into super weathering them, then they're perfect for that because they've got so much space and so much. Uh, I've also just realised they're fantastic for transfers as well. Yeah, they're brilliant. Uh, I've yeah. got, I've got, I've used the Salamanders transfer kit a lot, the Ultramoves transfer kit a lot, and the Iron Warriors transfer kit from Forward World a lot. And I found on a lot of those, they've got so many different transfers that look incredible. But on most of your infantry, nowhere to put them. Yeah, because you don't have the space. Like you've got this really cool like cog symbol on the iron hands one um but it doesn't fit on a normal marine's shoulder pad so if you shrink it down or get one of the shrunk down ones it'll start to fit on but you're also just like it's a little bit small that'd look great on a leg except you can't then get it on a leg whereas on mark six you've got the long length of yeah yeah limb to get a nice transfer on a leg yeah i absolutely loved the 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 toe armor highlighting just as a painter oh, yeah, I yeah. it was great to paint like <laughs> honestly the, every individual but that's just me just ocd okay, the toe OCD. armor toe armor i'm not a massive fan of I was, actually yeah i was getting ocd just making sure each of the squares was like i think that's why i'm not a that's, that's an error <laughs> if i was going to do an army project myself i'd like to cut corners by not having to do that yeah see, see i want I, what i would love to do is um if i do get a box for myself obviously for adding i can add some to the angels that we've got or i can either just but i'd like to do probably iron warriors and just weather the hell out of them or do something yeah. really, really different well just, this was the big debate i was having as to whether i did super heavy weathered iron warriors but then i'm like but it doesn't match the other iron warriors I already have no exactly or whether i go ultramarines i think i'm going to do really nice ultramarines with, with nice weathering ultra. yeah that'd be, that'd be lovely but yeah so cool okay so uh in in whole i think that the, we you know for four and four weeks four and a half weeks from arrival of box to completion i think i think you know um we've done okay for getting it done in the time frame um in hindsight probably um i probably should have spent more time on the infantry in my mind yeah i, think, I mean yeah. i'm looking at for what we're wanting to do essentially spending like working out the times i'm gonna have to spend on my own box it's gonna be a day per model like an eight hour working day yeah yeah um which obviously i'll be doing in the evening so we're essentially looking at two days per model so we're looking at 80 days to do the infantry if i do yeah four hours it's, of uh, my life uh, every single day it's it, you know the painting 40 bolters one after another in a row um yeah i i i, I love batch I mean, painting but I will have Spartan a... <laughs> was Spartan was two and a half days, I yeah. think. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe approaching three. Yeah, yeah. Terminators were the longest for me. Yeah, craters were a day and a half each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so then that leads us like quite nicely into into the events. So the lead up to the event, obviously, um, we uh, we went there a couple of days before the before the actual Heresy Day, which was a Saturday. Um, which uh, was good because we just went up there to just meet up and catch up with loads of people, uh, get to meet obviously a lot of the other content creators perhaps we haven't met before. Um, and uh, we, we, we had the lovely opportunity of staying up there as well, which was great. Um, and uh, and then obviously the first couple of days were just really just some of the some of the content creators have never been hanging out. Yeah, hanging out to some which, extent, which was great. I thought, yeah, yeah ev everyone everyone kind of had filming times allocated. Yeah, um, or there was, there was content creation time. Yeah. Um, allocated but the rest of it was kind of like you know meeting people you've maybe interacted with online or in my case as as not a personality in the industry <laughs> like meeting uh nick from play on as someone i've watched a vast number of videos of um and obviously we've worked with in the past yeah um i knew liam paint stuff's salamanders from instagram already so it was incredible to speak to him um then it was it was like you know every, every single person i only picked those two out because they were the first people i met on the uh, Wednesday evening. Yeah, yeah. But every single person I met was kind of just like, it's really nice to finally meet you in person yeah. after either interacting online or me doing a little bit of a little bit of stalking online as to like, you know, <laughs> YouTube history of of what their content is like. So uh, the other thing that happened obviously uh, early going up there early was um was was being involved in actually having a quick like demo or having some time to have a go with the actual new heresy yeah, game. I didn't get a chance to have a go. So what, what was it like? So, what did you so what did you enjoy about it? So uh, I'm not really what didn't you enjoy about it? <laughs> Well, I, I'm not really. As, as some people may know that I, I'm gaming side of things in the last couple of years to me is kind of uh, is a little bit diminished because of just how busy we've been with with pandemic and 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 obviously me just wanting to do a bit more painting perhaps. Um, but um, I do enjoy a game, and I I am very competitive when I when I get down to it. Um, so 
we we had the opportunity of of having a go uh, of, of of a game um, with uh, with a couple of the chaps from 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 Warhammer community and from uh, from uh, like Nick Baton for example and a couple of other of the chaps that are involved in some of the games on um, Warhammer Plus on TV, um, which was really cool because they were like really showing us how to do things. So one of the things insti- instantly that I thought that was amazing about the actual game is the um, is the way that it's kind of like a hybrid between seventh and eighth, uh, as in the game core mechanics. Uh, some of my favourite things uh, that maybe aren't in ninth forty k are now in that about are still in, in in heresy. So for example, you've got all the unique special rules which are really cool. Um, so they're still there. Um, and and also I think one of the biggest and I think one of the most groundbreaking things that's being done in the new heresy edition is the reactions, which is just phenomenal. Um, so you you have a unit and it will if it when it moves or if it fires or whatever the case may be the opposing player gets the opportunity to uh, to react with the, with one unit or the, the, the unit that's been targeted by the the action the attack the whatever the case may be and it really makes for um for a much more engaging and, and thought-provoking game i've always yeah. i've always it's great in edge of sigma and it's in its current version as well getting yeah. just simple reactions in yeah it, it, it's it, it was a really interesting uh, key me- game mechanic which I think um, I think will... it, it helps break that I go remove your models yeah. you stand there and wait for me to finish yeah. you've removed your models now it's your turn to remove mine yeah exactly and and, and the, for an exa- as an example of a situation so just to give you guys what are watching a bit of an, of an idea of the scenario so me and Steve from, from Vanguard Tactics um, uh we were hanging out there quite a bit and, um, and and when it came down to going in we were actually in the same group that went down to have our trial game so obviously it came to me and Steve playing and now Steve's obviously known for being a, a, a crazy a bit competitive a little bit yeah he's, uh, if you're watching Steve uh, I nearly had you um, but, um, I think the difference is he's a bit competitive but has the nouns to back oh, yeah, up 100%. in terms of his yeah, game yeah, skill yeah, as well yeah. it's, uh, it's all bravado <laughs> on my part when it comes to competitive side um, but um, but um, so he used his uh, his Thousand Sons so they, they were using his Thousand Sons as one of the demo uh, armies and I got to use the SN uh, fists, which are really cool. Um, and um, and the scenario was like just basically capturing the, the the whoever had the most models by the Spartan by the end of turn three or whatever it was. Anyway, so um, so there was some strategy to it, other than other than me not achieving very well. But never mind. Um, the, the 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 point the point is is that that even for Steve, like I I used to love in seventh and eighth forty k. I used to love challenges. That used to be one of my favourite things. Like I thought it was so cinematic, where like a sergeant or a captain would be like, oh, I challenge you or to come here or whatever blah blah. And um and it was so funny because Steve couldn't get his head round it. He was like, look. I've got this guy with like five or six attacks and I just want to put them into the unit. But you, this one sergeant that's just challenging me to yeah. a duel means I can't kill the squad. I don't want to fight that move. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, 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 I genuinely thought from the experience of playing it and then also I got to watch like other people play a game as well. And and, and you had all manner of different people, obviously from, from the, the content creators that were there, people that had never played uh, a game before and then more focused on other things. Obviously the guys from like Play on Tabletop or, the, or like Steve, for example. And, and seeing loads of different content creators reactions to how the game works and how it the mechanics work was really interesting in itself um yeah so let me just jump in there very quickly i think actually one of my favorite things about the weekend was meeting such a diverse group of people because yeah. there's, there's been a lot online of oh, why were certain people chosen over others i think for me again like heresy from the beginning has been run in seventh edition heresy is an offshoot of the main of a main core system and it's never quite been its own thing obviously when eighth and ninth happened and her- heresy stayed its own once black books it essentially became its own thing but for me like this is this is the release of 2.0 is the first time heresy has got its own rule set yeah, yeah. yeah and it wants to get new people in to try out what is its own rule set uh, so it's great to see i think it's hopefully more people involved because of that yeah you you you're, you're bang on and you now a really good point there like i think one of the real good things about it is that it, it gives people the opportunity to try something that is a little bit different but then because of the narrative and background it has this in so much rich rich interest in different characters factions and all those kind of things so when you combine those two things for someone new getting into a gaming experience with 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 sort of tabletop game um heresy is very very good i think it's the, the rules and mechanics are very interesting you need to obviously read them like any game but i think once you've got them it 
for me, it's a lot more immersive. And I think that's the thing yeah. I really liked about it. Um, so, yeah, but um, a big thank you to everybody for watching. Um, I hope you've and enjoyed it. And everyone who came along as well. Yeah. yeah, it was really nice to meet everybody. Everyone we got to there. speak to. Um, so, yeah, but just a big thank you to you all for watching. And uh, a big thank you from, 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 from myself. And obviously, Ed, I'll let you do a little bit of a sign off if you want to do a sign off and say whatever you want to say. Not about Iron Warriors being Blood Angels, though. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, how did you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, thanks to like, thanks to everyone I met um, who was really nice from the content creators to the staff, uh, to the guys I spoke to on the day, um, whether it was about blood angels or the gentleman who was trying to convince me that um, I could do an alpha legion army that was both iron warriors and blood angels at the same time. You're not wrong. It's just, it's not for me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's know in the comments as well. Uh, what, what you thought about the day from, from your perspective of coming to the event, you know, yeah. it's, it's always nice to get both perspectives. Yeah. Um, and and hear from you guys we're going to finish it with one question though for the comments this is the thing i want to work out so if you are watching this and if you were handed uh one of the new heresy boxes comment below what legion you would paint it as and most importantly why i think that's a good way to end it um yeah so a huge thank you to everybody who's watching huge thank you to uh to games workshop for inviting us to the event and for being involved um and yeah. shout out to andy and jamie for working yeah. really yeah. hard yeah. on massive, getting the event put together massive thank you they yeah, absolutely smashed smashed it um and, and to um, everyone else behind the scenes we didn't get to hear about being involved in arranging yeah. things yeah huge huge thank you uh so yeah we'll see you very soon on the next one